man, I love this city. But if you're looking for a guide that's gonna tell you all about Stanley Park and the aquarium and all those other typical tourist spots, you're in the wrong spot. This video is not your average guide to Vancouver, Canada, my hometown. Let's get started. Now, while everyone will tell you to go see Gastown, which is the oldest part of Vancouver, this block of West 10th Avenue between Columbia and Manitoba Street has the most number of heritage homes in one block. So if you want to get a good idea of what a residential area looked like back in the early 1900s in Vancouver, this is it. Oh, and look at that. There's a sign up there that says it was the most beautiful block in Vancouver from 1999 to 2001. Not only is it a beautiful street and beautiful homes and fun to learn the history of Vancouver by reading each placard and the story behind each house, but it's kind of fun to come down with a partner or a friend and look at all the houses, look at all the colors, and try and choose which one you would pick. Okay, thank you. And while you're out exploring the neighborhoods, keep your eyes open for these little neighborhood coffee shops. They're essentially the exact same as a, as a normal coffee shop. They just happen to be in the residential areas. And other than it being a nice, quiet, quaint way to get a cup of coffee in the morning, it's also a really good way to get a feel for the community because the only people that come to visit these coffee shops are the residents in the area. And this isn't the only one. They're all over the city, but they're, they're hidden within the residential area. So it might look like this, or it might look like this, or it might be like this one, or even this one. So wherever you are in the city, just walk through the neighborhoods. Get yourself a cup of coffee. Now most guides will tell you to go visit English Bay or Kitsilano Beach, and those are great, but I recommend Jericho Beach. It's much bigger, has a lot more beach, it's a lot less crowded, and when the tide goes out here, it goes way out, making it awesome for skimboarders and families to play on the sandbar. It also has Jericho Pier, which sticks out off of the beach, gives you a fantastic view of the city, and there's always people fishing for crabs here. It's a, it's a great little date spot or place to hang out, but I also like Jericho Park. It's the perfect place to come for a picnic or throw a frisbee. You find cute little bunnies and turtles and all sorts of birds around the duck pond. And keep your eyes open for a beaver. They have this, this mesh wrap around a lot of the trees here so the beaver doesn't attack them. But I haven't seen the beaver in a while now, so I, I feel like they've moved on. But if you're here, check it out. Although this looks pretty fresh, doesn't it? My personal favorite spot is this bench, kind of on a peninsula, surrounded by the pond. I just think this is the best spot in the whole city to come read. Which is perfect, because today's video is sponsored by Blinkist. It's the only app that has thousands of non-fiction books and condenses them down to just the most important parts that you can read or listen to in 15 minutes or less. All of these great non-fiction books that take, take hours to read, they're great. I have a long list of books I want to read, but I don't have the time. But when you can get all the important information sucked out of those books, condensed into 15 minute segments that I can read or listen to and get all that same information, but save me all that time? Isn't that what we all want? Currently I'm listening to Perceiving Time and Lockdown, but another one that I'm excited to read is Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude, which I think fits, right? So it's an app I really like. It helps me get caught up on all the reading I wanna do. But the best part is for the first 100 of us that click the link down below, they will give you a seven day free trial, get to the full features for seven days. And if you choose that you wanna stay on for the full membership after that, gives you 25% off. So saves you a little bit of money, gives you tons of non-fiction books, and it will save you endless hours. Let's go see what else Vancouver has to offer. This is the Vancouver Maritime Museum, and inside is the St. Rock. It's the first ever ship to circumnavigate North America. It's a beautiful ship, it's a beautiful museum, and outside they even have a few pieces, like this column here, which was made from a local quarry on an island, was put on a ship to head to San Francisco and be a front support column at a new bank, and then the ship sunk and we've pulled it out of the water, and now it sits here for you to see. There's also a submarine outside. But more interesting than all of that, I think, is right next door, Heritage Harbor. 
currently closed due to COVID, but normally it's open to the public, completely free. You can wander down to the docks, check out these vintage wooden boats. There's tugboats to sailboats, and each one has a plaque telling you the history of that boat. And it's a great way to get up close and personal. Per personal? Personal? It's a great way to get up close and personal with these old vessels. And again, just another great view of the city. And our next stop is here at the Cleveland Dam. It's not a hydroelectric dam. This is a freshwater dam, which is holding all the drinking water for Greater Vancouver. at the top is a beautiful park which makes a perfect place for a picnic and also to check out the lake well the reservoir the dam is a really beautiful place to come visit but I think it's even better slightly further downstream the salmon hatchery well it's currently closed because of the coronavirus but normally it's open to the public and free and it's really interesting this area also has tons of hiking trails walking trails it's beautiful to come see how moist and mossy everything is up here uh, if you get a sunny day, it can't be beat. So if you're wondering what the Worth hat is all about, it's named after Jacob Worth, who started the hat company and then sadly took his own life. So his friends have taken over the hat company and now all proceeds goes into a counseling fund to support people struggling with mental health. So this is the Downey Live edition, which you can get at the link in the description down below. Or if you're seeking help and you would like some counseling, they have a counseling fund to support you. So check that out down below. But now we're at the Jack Chow Insurance, which is Vancouver's skinniest building. It is exactly six feet wide. It's literally six feet wide, six feet deep, six feet thick, thin, skinny, six feet skinny, the whole length of the building. So much so that the part that has stairs inside, they had to kink it outwards so people can get around the stairs inside. So that is actually the widest part of the building. So if you do come to see it, I recommend coming to see it at night. They've put professional lighting inside as well as in the sidewalk and outside. So it's really quite a show to come see it at night. And if you take any pictures for Instagram, make sure to tag me. I'd love to see what you guys get up to in Vancouver. Okay, before I show you what's above me at the moment, if you're from Vancouver, let me know in the comments down below what I missed from this video. I'm gonna be making a part two soon because I can't travel, so I'll be here in Vancouver for the next little while. And once restaurants and places start opening up officially, I can do a part two on more of those topics. This time was kind of parks and places that are free and anyone can go to anytime. So let me know, drop a comment. What should I include in part two? All right, above me, those are dozens of large blue heron nests. To me, the reason this is so interesting is because the blue heron is such a big bird and there are so many of them in only a few trees here. There are dozens of nests. They'll all arrive and make their nests in March through April, they're doing courtship and kind of mating. In May, they'll be laying their eggs and doing incubation. In June, they're hatching. And by July, they're fledgling and flying out of there. And this, this is right at the entrance to Stanley Park. So you can see there are tennis courts here. This is the West End. Just on the other side of these trees, there are residential towers. This is a very dense part of the city. And yet, it feels like you're out in the middle of some jungle. My recommendation, Stand to the side a bit, don't stand directly underneath them because then you'll have to crane your neck way back to see them. <laughs> Heron jokes. Uh, but also you don't want to be in the splash zone. And if you don't think you can make it to the nest in time before they hatch and fly off, the city of Vancouver has a live cam up in one of the nests. So I'll link that down below so you can check it out. 
Don't forget to come back for part two. You can subscribe by clicking on my face right here. You can watch my last video right here. I'm Mike, the channel's Downy Live, and I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. See ya!